afternoon. Uh, anyway, good that at least a few have uh, turned up. Otherwise, I would have to reschedule the entire class. Uh, anyway, so as there is one more small correction uh, uh, to the previous class that we that I just want to bring forward. I think one there is one person who observed observed it and he was correct. The mean temperature for the high speed flows. I had uh, told that it should be 0.5 T wall minus T infinity plus um, T into I think it should just reverse the sign it should be T adiabatic wall minus T wall where C equal to 0 0.22. So, I, I think I had given this as uh, C into T wall minus T adiabatic. Uh, someone has correctly pointed out that since the adiabatic wall temperature is uh, greater than the wall temperature, so this has to be positive so that the mean temperature now is increasing rather than it should not decrease because now with the, the use of adiabatic profiles, for example, if you had plotted y versus t, which we had done, this is your t infinity from here. The profile should start something like this, and so this is your T wall. If you had applied an isothermal boundary condition without viscous dissipation, it would have come something like this. Okay, so therefore you see the average temperature has to now go up. Okay, earlier the average temperature was between T wall and T infinity. Okay, now the actual temperature will will be like this, something like it will go up inside. So, therefore, the average temperature has to, has to account for this increase in the so therefore, this has to be positive here. If this was T wall minus set, so generally your adiabatic wall temperature will be greater than your wall temperature. Okay, so, this will be positive and therefore, this will increase your uh, T mean temperature otherwise it will decrease the T mean temperature which is not physically correct. Okay, so, this uh, please incorporate this particular correction. And uh, now we will start a new topic. It is the same uh, solution to external boundary layer flows, but uh, we will use what is called as an approximate method of solution. Okay. So so far we have been uh, doing exact solution, so-called exact solutions, where we had uh, derived the similarity solu equations for uh, the different configurations and we had uh, solved it, but we cannot solve it exactly we have to solve it using some numerical method, but nevertheless uh, the solution is the solution is for an equation which is actually an exact equation. Okay, now we will look at techniques where uh, we will approximate the solution by means of some profiles rather than uh, trying to solve uh, by a numerical technique that the way that we were doing till now. So, we do not know the profiles how they look, so but we got that as a solution of the similarity equation. Now we will approximate the profiles as something depending on the order of accuracy. You know, you can use a linear profile or quadratic or cubic or fourth order, whatever polynomial. So we will substitute that into the governing equation. Uh, once you know the profiles, we can determine the uh, expression for boundary layer thickness, um, the thermal boundary layer thickness, and therefore uh, the heat flux, Nusselt number, and so on. So this this kind of technique uh, is also called the integral method. Many people also refer this as the approximate okay. So, the starting point of this is to uh, start with essentially an integral form of why this this is called an integral method is you operate with integral form of the governing equation form of boundary layer momentum and energy. Okay, so, why do we uh, use the integral form is uh, of course, the integral form uh, is more helpful when you are approximating some solution putting it inside and integrating it out directly. Okay. So, therefore, uh, this is more convenient for the approximate solution to work with an integral form and uh, I am not going to now derive the integral form because if I remember correctly I had already derived 
a particular version of the integral form. If you if you may recall recollect your earlier notes for the flat plate Blasius solution, uh, we try to find the expression for boundary layer thickness delta. So as uh, something like square root of uh, nu x by u infinity, right? So this was derived by integrating the momentum equation from zero to delta and from there we had solved an ODE to get the expression for delta. Okay. So in fact at that time I told that I am not going to derive it again because we will be using that as a starting point. So the point where we left off, so we integrated the x momentum equations, I am just going to write it just to show you how it looked. du by dy dy is equal to nu du by dy between the limits equal to 0 and y equal to delta okay so we just integrate the boundary layer momentum equation for a flat plate okay we could also uh, include your uh, uh, pressure gradient term so that will be additionally plus uh, u infinity du infinity by dx and uh, integrated between 0 to y dy it is nothing but delta. Okay. So how we got this because originally this term was nothing but minus 1 by rho dp by dx and we saw in the boundary layer that the pressure gradient along y is negligible therefore we can apply this equation to the inviscid potential flow outside and uh, we can directly find that this is equal to u infinity du infinity by dx okay and when when you integrate it across the boundary layer so that will be this will be constant okay for a particular y location so you can directly say that is multiplied by delta okay so if you have a pressure gradient that term also enters into this uh, final expression and uh, after we uh, uh, broke this term we integrated by parts and then we used the continuity equation to make some approximations and finally we arrived at this particular form 0 to delta u du by dx especially the left hand side minus u infinity 0 to delta du by dx dy this is equal to nu du dy uh, <coughs> 0 to delta plus u infinity du infinity by dx into delta okay so i think uh, we arrived at this particular form for the entire left hand side term after we use the continuity and we integrate it we integrated it out and from here we are going to start now okay so this is nothing but the momentum integral equation but uh, still not the final form okay so i'm just going to rearrange some of the terms in fact what i'm going to do here is i can uh, once again integrate by parts uh, Okay, so I can do this as uh, uh, d of uh, u infinity u by dx minus uh, u into du infinity by dx. I can I can just re-express re-express that way, and I'm going to multiply throughout by a negative sign. And if I just rewrite this a little bit, so this will be d by dx 0 to infinity 0 to delta u infinity minus u into u dy so u infinity into u is basically this term minus this can be neatly written as directly 0 to delta d into u u by dx dy right 
So, du square is nothing but 2u du dx. Okay. So, so I can just write this as d by dx. So, I can take d by dx out. So, 0 to delta. So, I am multiplying throughout by negative sign. Okay. So, I can write this as uh, so, this is already negative, negative of negative is become positive. So, u infinity into u minus u u. Okay. So, that is this particular term. Okay. Plus the other term uh, which I which I have written this is d u infinity by d x which I can take common from here as well as from the right hand side term. Okay. So, this can be written as d u infinity by d x integral 0 to delta. Okay, so here I I have an, a negative sign here, and I multiply it with a negative sign. So this should become uh, positive. Okay, so this should be a positive. Again, I multiply it with a negative, so that should become negative. And uh, this one is already negative, goes to the left hand side term that becomes positive. So this becomes u infinity minus u dy. Okay, on the right hand side. Now, if I integrate this from zero to delta. So, at uh, uh, this at y equal to delta d u by d y should vanish. Okay. So, this becomes uh, minus new d u by d y with a minus sign. So, this becomes positive this becomes new d u by d y at y equal to 0. Okay. So, I have probably skipped a couple of steps, but I think you can understand straight away how that comes out. Do you want me to explain again or uh, is it okay? Okay, so till here you know how it has come out okay, from the previous derivation. So, from here I am just uh, rewriting this first time as uh, d, d, d u u by d x and this I am integrating by parts again. Okay, so, I can write this as u infinity u d by d x minus u d u infinity by d x. So, therefore, so this term and this term can be combined. I can take d by dx out of the integral. So, 0 to delta u infinity minus u u. Okay. So, this is u infinity into u, this is u u. So, I take small u common u infinity minus u dy and the other two terms. So, here d u infinity by dx is common to this and this. Okay. So, and I can I can write this as instead of writing this as delta I can write this as 0 to delta d y. Okay. So, that is uh, u infinity that is basically this u infinity into d y minus there is again this u d y. Okay. So, which is what I am writing here together. On the right hand side term this is uh, 0 to delta. So, at delta d u by d y is 0. Right. So, therefore, this is minus d u by d y at y equal to 0 already multiplying throughout by minus. So, this becomes nu du by dy at y equal to 0. Okay. So, this is my final expression. In fact, I can also rewrite in a more familiar form. Uh, so, I can write this as d by dx of I can take multiply and divide by u infinity square for this particular term. So, this will be u infinity square into I will just uh, denote this as something like delta 2 plus uh, in this case I can multiply by multiply and divide by u infinity. Okay. So, I will call that as some delta 1 into d u infinity by d x on the right hand side I have this as it is. So, where my delta 1 will be so multiply and divide by u infinity. So, this will be u infinity uh, 0 to delta. So, this is u infinity by uh, u infinity which is 1 1 minus u by u infinity into d u. Okay. Uh, so, Okay, so I am not going to write exactly like this. I am just rewriting slightly in a different manner. Just a minute. So I am multiplying and dividing it so that 
delta 1 into u infinity is here and delta 1 is defined in this particular fashion okay. and delta 2 so multiplying and dividing by u infinity square and divide by u infinity square this will be 0 to delta 1 minus u by u infinity into u by u infinity dy. Okay. So, this is also another nice form that you find in many of the textbooks. Nevertheless, all the three, whether whether it is this form or this form, this form, they are all the momentum integral equations or integral momentum equations. Okay. I personally prefer looking at this form, this is almost the final form and this gives you a lot of information because here this delta 1 which I have defined here, there is a particular name to it, this is also called the displacement thickness and delta 2 here is called the momentum thickness. Okay. So, and this is your I hope uh, you have a good understanding of what is uh, displacement thickness and momentum thickness okay, from your incompressible flows. I am not going to go into an explanation for that now. It is only, so this, these are not really measurable. Okay, this is what you have to understand. Unlike the boundary layer thickness which you can measure at a, as a location, these are conceptual values which give you a sense if you suppose replace the boundary layer with a potential flow profile. So, how much the the wall has to be pushed up okay, so or displaced in order to satisfy continuity or satisfy conservation of momentum. Okay, so, that is this location. So, these are all not measurable. Okay, these are something which you are conceptualizing and usually these are much much smaller than your actual boundary layer thickness. Okay. So, so, this is your momentum integral equation. So, you are writing this in terms of the momentum integral or your displacement uh, integral and so on. For the case of flat plate without the pressure gradient the second term will be 0. So, you do not have anything in terms of the displacement thickness. So, <coughs> for flat plate your d u infinity by d x is equal to 0 and this will lead to the form you can write u infinity square d by dx 0 to delta okay so this is the integral momentum equation for flat plate let me call this as number 1 okay this is the one form that we will be using to substitute all our approximate profiles. Now, same way we will derive the integral form of uh, boundary layer energy equation. Okay, we start from the uh, uh, con conventional energy boundary layer equation and then we integrate it out across the boundary layer thickness and we arrive at a similar integral energy equation. Okay. Okay, so, we start with our standard energy equation we do not assume any viscous dissipation term here for flat plate case without viscous dissipation this is your equation at y equal to 0 it could be either wall temperature is fixed or your prescribed heat flux which is constant and at y going to infinity T is equal to T infinity at x equal to 0 also the same thing follows. So, what we are simply doing is integrating again. Now, when we are integrating now we cannot integrate it till the boundary layer thickness because now we have to integrate it till the characteristic thickness for the energy which is the thermal boundary layer thickness. Okay. 
So, we integrate it till delta t. Of course, you know we are not making any assumption whether delta t is greater than delta or less than delta, whatever extent it may be, we are just integrating till the edge of the thermal boundary layer. And um, so, we will try to uh, eliminate V so that uh, we write everything in terms of uh, uh, U. So, we will see that the second term can be integrated by parts. So, this can be written as 0 to delta T okay i can write this as d by dy of vt integrate between 0 and delta t so that is nothing but uh, v into t between the limit 0 and delta t okay minus integral 0 to delta t into t dv by dy okay on the other side you have uh, alpha delta t by del y between the limit 0 and delta t and at delta t d t by d y is 0. Okay, it has to satisfy continuity uh, in slope at the edge of the boundary layer. So, therefore, so this will become minus alpha d t by d y at y equal to 0. Okay. So, this is coming because at x is equal to y going to infinity t equal to t infinity therefore, d t by d y has to be 0. Okay. So, now this particular term again at y equal to 0, v is 0. So, the, this, this will be valid number only when you look at y equal to delta t. So, where once again uh, your t will become t infinity there. Okay. So, at delta t this will become t infinity. Okay. So, this is at delta t. Is that fine? So, now what we can do is uh, once again we can uh, integrate this by parts. You can write this as uh, 0 to delta t into d by dx of ut dy minus 0 to delta t t du by dx dy. Okay. So, therefore, you can combine this and this term right here. So, you can take t common this is du by dx plus dv by dy which is nothing but the continuity equation all right. Therefore, I can write this as 0 to delta t d by dx of ut dy plus v t infinity minus I can take uh, 0 to delta t t common d u by d x plus d v by d y this is equal to minus alpha d t by d y at y equal to 0. So, and this also satisfies continuity. So, this goes to okay. and also from continuity you know that my v equal to minus 0 to if I integrate from 0 to delta t the continuity equation I can write my v velocity in terms of u velocity. So, just the continuity I am integrating. Okay. So, I can substitute and now I can eliminate v from this equation. So, if I write this in terms of uh, u velocities this will be 0 to delta t I can take d by dx out d by dx ut dy minus I have t infinity into integral 0 to delta t d u by d x minus alpha d t d y y equal to 0. Okay, so, I just uh, want to combine uh, these two terms I can write this as now d by d x okay, 0 to delta t I multiply by minus sign throughout this will be t infinity minus uh, 
p so u is common for both uh, i can write this as uh, u dy this is equal to alpha dt by dy at y equal to 0 okay so this is my final form this is the energy integral equation okay so i can combine these two terms because t infinity is anyway constant i can take this i can write this as d by dx of t infinity u so u is common in both the cases i can combine this okay so now we have uh, both of them uh, so i am going to define my theta uh, in fact i can write write in terms of theta but let me do it later so just let me write down the energy equation energy integral 0 to delta t infinity minus t u d y should be equal to alpha okay so this is your equation number 2 which is your energy integral okay so the first step is uh, that we derive the integral form of uh, momentum and energy and we have put it in this particular uh, pattern and next uh, what we are going to do in the approximate solution we are going to make an approximate assumption for uh, for the velocity and temperature as some polynomial okay so it can be any order polynomial and we have to see which boundary conditions that the profiles have to satisfy to calculate the coefficient of these polynomials so this is the next step so now let us uh, take the case where we have uh, a linear velocity profile you know that is the most basic profile that you can start with so for the laminar flow let us assume a linear velocity profile so i am just saying that my u would be something like a plus b y okay this is the linear form of the velocity profile that i am assuming so in order to get the uh, constants a and b i have to satisfy boundary conditions okay so the most you have to start with the most basic boundary conditions before we go to satisfying the more higher order boundary conditions okay the the most important boundary conditions start from the wall at y equal to 0 u equal to 0 okay and uh, after this what should be the second most important boundary condition so once you have given at y equal to 0 you have to give something at y equal to delta okay u equal to u infinity these are the most basic boundary conditions which are which are which have to be satisfied i cannot directly say du by dy at y equal to delta is 0 has to be satisfied then it does not tell what value it should reach at y equal to delta okay it just only says that uh, the slope is 0 that is it so if you substitute can you tell me what will be the profile that I get so if you directly substitute this y equal to 0 u equal to 0 here a will be 0 at y equal to delta u will become u infinity therefore b will be u infinity by delta okay so therefore your u will be equal to u infinity y by delta so u by u infinity will be equal to y by delta so this is my linear velocity profile so if i if i plot this profile for a flat plate at any location it will show only something like this a very linear variation from 0 to u infinity at y equal to 0 u will be 0 and very linearly at y equal to delta u will become u infinity so this will be delta something like a quad flow profile okay so this is not actually the real profile right your real profile is uh, for satisfying a different relationship 
which which we have seen from the Blasius solution, and definitely the shape doesn't look like this. Okay, there is a slope, there is a curvature terms are all there, okay, which we are not accounting for in this particular. Okay, the slope is constant and there is no curvature. So therefore, this may not be a very good profile, but still this is an approximation. Okay, so why we are approximating it is once we may give this kind of an approximate profile, we can substitute for velocity in this momentum integral and we can directly calculate the boundary layer thickness, the expression for delta can be uh, determined. So what I am going to do now is substitute this profile into 1, so if I substitute into 1, so that I will get u infinity square d by dx 0 to delta into 1 minus, so u by u infinity now will be y by delta into y by delta into dy. On the right hand side I have nu du by dy at y equal to 0, so du by dy now will be what, u infinity by delta okay, from the linear profile. So therefore, so anyway that is a constant slope, it does not matter whether it is at y equal to 0 or so it, this is just a linear profile, so the slope is constant, so this will be nu into u infinity by delta, okay. So very simple profile and the equation also looks simple. Now I am going to introduce a non-dimensional variable eta which is equal to y by delta, okay. Do not confuse this with the similarity variable, of course I am using the same variable here because coincidentally in the similarity solution also eta was the similarity variable which is which was related to y and delta exactly like this but here i am just using eta to represent any non dimensional variable so if i do that so i can transform y in terms of the non dimensional eta this will become u infinity square d by dx now integral from 0 to delta will become 0 to 1 in terms of eta okay so 1 minus eta into eta into this will be dy by d eta into d eta okay dy by d eta will be delta so basically i can i can put this delta here into d eta okay which will be equal to on the right hand side new u infinity by delta okay now this delta has to be with inside d by dx because delta is a function of your position along the flat plate so if you do the integral uh, maybe you can take a couple of minutes and do it but uh, since uh, we don't have time i'm just going to give you the final solution so uh, this will come out to be 1 by 6 okay so the integral 0 to 1 1 minus eta into eta d eta should come out as 1 by 6 okay so in that case this will become i can can cancel u infinity on both sides and this will be delta will come to this side so delta d delta by dx will be equal to 6 uh, <coughs> nu by u infinity okay so now this is a very simple uh, ode which i can solve by separation of variables straight away okay so this will be delta square will be equal to 12 mu by u infinity x plus some constant okay this is the solution for delta of course uh, we can find the constant by applying the boundary condition that at x is equal to 0 delta equal to 0 right the boundary layer thickness is 0 at the uh, leading edge of the plate and therefore your constant will be 0 okay so your expression for delta now reduces to the form delta is equal to square root of 12 nu x by u infinity which is nothing but 3.47 square root of nu x by nu infinity or 
delta by x can be written as 3.47, I can divide by x on both sides and this will be u infinity x by nu which will be nothing but square root of Reynolds number, this will be square root of Reynolds number. Now you can compare this with the similarity solution from which we calculated the expression for delta. Do you recollect uh, what is the expression there? That was 5. Okay, so how did we do that? We calculated for different values of eta, f of uh, f of uh, 0, f prime of 0 and also at uh, all other values of eta we have tabulated and we found out uh, the corresponding value of eta where your u by u infinity or your f prime was 0 0.99. Corresponding to f prime 0 0.99 we found that eta was equal to exactly 5 and that, that is nothing but the value of uh, delta. Okay. So, this is how we have got it approximately the actual solution is delta by x is equal to 5 by square root of R e x. So, the, since we are using an approximate profile this is the uh, variation you know. So, this is about 31 percent less than the exact solution. Okay, so, there is an underestimation that we get by using the linear profile. And we can go ahead and calculate the wall shear stress local variation which is nu du by dy at y equal to 0. Okay. So, in this case du by dy at y equal to 0 is nothing but for the linear profile u infinity by delta. Okay. So, this is nu u infinity by delta. So, we have already got the expression for delta which we will substitute here and if you do that you will get 0.288 u u infinity square root of by nu x. Okay. So, now if you define non dimensional local skin friction coefficient as tau all by rho infinity square. So, this will come out as 0 0.576 by square root of Reynolds number. Okay. So, and if you remember the exact solution was giving 0 0.664. Okay, so, this is about 13 percent less than exact solution. Okay. So, if you also go ahead and integrate the local skin friction coefficient over the plate and calculate the average skin friction coefficient for the entire plate that is your C f l is equal to 1 by L 0 to L C of x dx. Okay, so, we will end up with expression 1.152 by square root of R e L. Okay. So, finally, the bottom line is this you can you can get an approximate estimate of all these quantities like boundary layer thickness, uh, your local shear stress, skin friction coefficient everything using some approximate profiles and this is much much easier as you can see than doing a rigorous solution to the similarity equation. Okay. And uh, in fact, if you use a better profile you will be amazed to find that the agreement will be even better. Okay. So, just to give an example if you go from a linear profile to a cubic profile okay, which uh, I will just uh, show you and stop there. Okay. So, if you assume a cubic velocity profile. u is equal to a plus b y plus c y square plus d y cube. Okay. So, now you have 1, 2, 3, 4 coefficients and we have to satisfy therefore, 4 boundary conditions. So, what, what are the possible boundary conditions y equal to 0, u equal to 0 and at y equal to delta 
u infinity. So, these are the important boundary conditions and what is the next important boundary condition? Huh? At y equal to 0, rho u by dou y. So, if you so if you look at the momentum equation, okay. So, u du by dx plus v du by dy is equal to nu d square u by dy square at the wall, okay. Both are zero. So, therefore, d square u by dy square has to be this is the next importance so in the order of importance i am writing it okay and then finally what what is the last boundary condition that you have to give cubic in terms of uh, the order of importance okay so these are most important and then at y equal to 0 this is to be given and then y equal to what delta okay so these are the four important boundary conditions so if i substitute these boundary conditions into the profile and uh, you calculate all the coefficients finally i will be able to arrive at an expression which is like this u by u infinity will be 3 by 2 y by delta minus 1 by 2 y by delta the whole cube okay so this is the cubic velocity profile that you will get i'm sure uh, most of you have taken the heat transfer course have uh, done this also in advanced heat and mass transfer uh, in incompressible fluid flows also okay so cubic profile is like the accurate profile that you can do okay so once you get this and if you substitute the same way that we did the linear profile into the momentum equation. So, let us see what happens to the final expressions. The final expression for delta that comes out with the cubic profile will be 4.64 that is the correct delta by x will be 4.64 by square root of R e x. So, you can see a remarkable improvement. Okay. So, this is like 7 percent less than the exact solution. And when you look at the skin friction coefficient, so this value comes out as 0 0.646 by square root of R e x. This is like almost there, 3 percent less. Okay. So this is 0 0.664, this is 0 0.646, almost there. So you can see that uh, with a cubic profile, you get a very good uh, approximation, very accurate. Uh, solutions okay rather than going for a very rigorous similarity solution so nowadays i think many of the people they they are not so interested in the similarity solution because you have numerical techniques where you can directly solve the governing equations okay and or you can also resort to solutions like uh, approximate methods with the integral equation where you can uh, make use of some approximate polynomials and also get the solution so that that's why these are more popular methods okay and which are also workable in a very short time but the you have to be cautious that doesn't mean that if you keep increasing the polynomial now this accuracy will become better and better okay so for example if you go from linear to quadratic and from quadratic to cubic you will find that it doesn't progressively increase in terms of accuracy okay in fact quadratic in fact spoils the solution a little bit that is mainly because in the case of quadratic boundary conditions, we give this boundary condition, this boundary condition and finally this boundary condition. We do not give this particular boundary condition. Okay. So, because we have only up to here, we do not give up to this boundary condition. Because of that, you will find there is a degeneration in the accuracy, the quadratic case. Again with the cubic, it satisfies all the fundamental boundary conditions and the accuracy goes up. 
and if you use a, a fourth order polynomial again you may have to give something like y equal to delta d square u by dy square equal to 0. You have to introduce higher derivative basically and they may not be very important. So therefore you may not get you know the, the error may not come down all the time. So that is why maximum you go to cubic and we can stop there. Okay. So in the next class tomorrow we will make an approximation for the temperature profile the same way that we did and we will substitute into the energy equation and calculate the thermal boundary layer thickness and therefore the heat transfer coefficient. Okay. So we will see these aspects in the next class. So quickly we will move from flat plate. So flat plate I am sure many of you have familiar with the heat transfer course. So we are not going to spend much time. We will do this analysis for flows with pressure gradient similarity flows. Is that dealt with in the, the other courses or no? Where you have done similarity solution for adverse pressure gradient flows or pressure gradient flows. I am sure something must have been done in incompressible flows. The Thwaites method, Thwaites method and Karman Polhausen method. Okay, so maybe we will cover those aspects uh, in the future next uh, four or five lectures. Okay.